What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. Welcome bike to another bounce bike episode. I love these episodes because I get to say bike like 45 times and you guys can't get pissed. You guys are probably already sick of it after yesterday's bounce back video. All right, we'll, we'll stick to back for today to not piss everybody off. We, we do want to gain some new subscribers. So if you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're doing everything fantasy football up until your drafts and throughout thy season yesterday we covered our bounce back running back list so the post type sleepers dudes maybe fell off a little bit but we expect them to get right back on the saddle and fucking skirt your team to hardware this year so we've got wide receivers today we've got a good list of wide receivers today there weren't that many running backs i was excited about but there are a lot of wide receivers that i think meet the bill fit the bill and you guys pointed that out to me on uh on twitter you got a lot of good suggestions for who your top bounce back players for the year are. And uh, we have a list of about five or six of them today, okay? And y'all know what we have to do before we start it off to tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's see. So, our most popular our highest requested player in terms of bounce back guys for this year unsurprisingly michael thomas of the new orleans saints michael thomas is currently going off the board in the third round middle third round for someone who is a year removed from being an absolute league winner he's the wide receiver nine around pick 30 so midway through the third round and we're talking about a guy who had one of the greatest single wide receiver seasons ever, a fantasy wide receiver one season from Michael Thomas in 2019. It wasn't that long ago, okay? And last year, you could pretty much explain away all the nonsense that happened via his high ankle sprain. He suffered in week one. And from there, it cost him a bunch of games. It led to a, a bunch of games in which he was, you know, halfway injured through, a bunch of games in which he was basically a decoy and a handful of games that he did actually end up playing in. All right, but let's get one thing fucking straight, like an arrow. He is still the same same separator that he's always been his success rate versus man zone press is among the best in the NFL that did not tip off that did not veer off that is still extremely extremely high even even during an injured season and his target share in the games that he played last year around 28 percent 27.8 percent which was fourth in the NFL his air yard share so the percentage of air yards that a team had how many of those went to their wide receiver ones how many of that how many of that went to their wide receiver twos Michael Thomas had a 42.5 percent air yard share on the Saints that ranked number one among NFL wide receivers so you're talking about a guy who was fourth in overall target share first in overall air yard share okay and his efficiency listen the stats were down he was injured catchable target rate Target quality rating, both outside the top 70. Yards per out run, 16th, despite seeing a bunch of shitty targets. True catch rate, number two. The dude still got the top hands in the NFL, all right? Nothing about Thomas last year says that he's not still Michael Thomas, one of the, the game's premier wide receivers. You have the target share. You have the air yard share among the elites. And what do they do at the wide receiver position this year? Absolutely fucking nothing besides let Emmanuel Sanders walk to Buffalo during free agency. You know what Emmanuel Sanders leaving opens up? 19% of the target share and 26% of the air yards in this offense. And if you don't think some of those are going to Mike, uh, Michael Thomas might lead the NFL in both target share and air yard share this year. So when you come back to this video next year, and I tell you, Michael Thomas is as solid as they come as a third round pick this year in fantasy. I mean, all y'all fucking know that already, but he should be going higher, man. The big question, of course, and why he's not going higher, what happens at the quarterback position, all right? I still think it's very much Jameis, Jameis Winston's job to lose. I still think he's the guy. They will use a committee when when they get inside the 10-yard line. Sometimes, other times, they're not. it's just not going to be 100% Taysom Hill down, down in the 10-yard line. I think it's good for Thomas that Jameis Winston has his job. We don't really want to rely on Michael Thomas throwing the ball or uh, Taysom Hill throwing the ball more than 20 yards down the field. It's not going to end up good for anybody. But if Taysom somehow does pull out the job and he is the starter, Thomas was still great in terms of volume and opportunity in the games that Taysom Hill started last year. We had a four-game sample size, right? Taysom Hill was a starter in four games. Michael Thomas probably injured for half of them, over 16 PPR fantasy points per game, but more importantly, over nine targets a game, 9.25 targets per game, seven and a half receptions per game, and 86 receiving yards per game in the four starts that Taysom Hill had had last year so a healthy Thomas is a healthy Michael Thomas okay there's no other way to put it put it down for you there's no other way to fucking kick that flavor into your ear an elite opportunity share and there's no reason Thomas shouldn't fin finish inside the top eight 
six four fantasy wide receivers this year when he's getting when he's getting third round draft capital and you love and you love to see it all right next up on this list is mikey dub mikey fucking dub out in los angeles mike williams currently going off the board is like the wide receiver 49 over pick one 100 so triple digits we're talking about and this is absolutely the first year i'm buying into mike williams i have never drafted him not in redraft not in dynasty but i am in on mike williams this year his rookie year was a bust because of a serious knee injury or back injury whatever the fuck it was missed time didn't do anything his rookie year his sophomore year caught 10 10 receiving touchdowns his junior year he had a thousand receiving yards in just 15 games last year he was decimated by an invisible undertaker that choke slammed him every time he went up to grab jump ball but it led to him missing multiple games with an injury, it, uh, super limited due to in-game injuries and a few others. Uh, there were like three to four games in which he played in 50% or fewer of the snaps. So just a completely band-aided together year for Mike Williams. And I think that kind of accounts for the stats that were down after having a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns in two of the first three seasons. And th- there's there's a chance, there's a chance that we look back on this and Mike Williams is not even the wide receiver two in Los Angeles at the end of the year, right? This is definitely not foolproof plan, but the fact that you're getting to pick him around 110, 115 or whatever, I think is a massive, massive opportunity. Okay. Like there's the rookie Josh Palmer. There's Tyron Johnson, like whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if we look back at the end of the year and he's not the second leading receiver on the team. But what you have here is a very lady ADP. What you have here is an exploding offense attached to uh, an up and coming superstar in Justin Herbert. What you have here is a wide receiver again, who had either 10 touchdowns or a thousand receiving yards in two of his first three seasons and is projected by the new offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, to be, uh, to have a very significant role in this offense. Mike Williams is expected to play the X receiver spot in uh, new OC Joe, Joe Lombardi's offense. It is the Michael Thomas spot in the offense for Lombardi, who is the former quarterbacks coach of the Saints. That should mean a lot of targets, yada, yada, yada. He's not going to be fucking Michael Thomas, but it's good to know that they do have a vision for him. It's not like, oh, we're we're letting Josh Palmer, you know, you hear a lot of things throughout the summer, a lot of reports that are conflicting, but you'd rather hear the good shit than the bad shit, right? You'd rather not hear, you know, Michael Thomas's injury status over the last few years has opened up the second wide receiver hole for a guy like Josh Palmer to compete or whatever, right? We're not hearing that. We're hearing that Mike Williams is going to play the X receiver role in an offense that's up and coming, should be fast paced, should see a lot of pass attempts from Justin Herbert. I'd imagine this team was is going to finish in, in terms of uh, pass attempts inside the top five for NFL teams. They simply just don't have a fucking running back in that backfield to uh, equip to carry the ball at, at a high rate. So Williams doesn't need to have an extremely high target share to have really high raw target numbers, okay? And we know a lot of his targets, even if they are of the lower volume, will be highly valuable because they're downfield. Consistently ranks inside the top 10 in terms of average depth of target. They're always down the field. So when he does catch three or four passes, they usually equate to 85 yards or more. Not to mention Hunter Henry is gone, who led their team in 10 zone targets last year. So there could be touchdown upside for Mikey Williams. So realistically, at the end of the day, you weigh the positives, you weigh the negatives, and there are a lot of positives on the good side of the ledger for Mike Williams. You have to weight the good and the bad, and you start getting into the later rounds. And I mean, Williams certainly has way more good things going for him than bad things. So I like a bounce bike. We like the bounce bike for Mike. 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 Next fucking player on the list. Another Mike. We like a bounce bike. Mike from f- fucking Mike Gallup. Dallas Cowboys. We we love us a little Michael Gallup this year. Let's not forget, as a sophomore, what Michael Gallup did. 113 targets, 66 catches, 1,107 receiving yards, and six touchdowns in 14 games. In 14 games, this guy had over 1,100 receiving yards. That number dropped off significantly in 2021. He played a full 16, and that number still dropped off pretty significantly. I kind of I kind of liken him to the. Uh, Dallas's version of Antonio Brown in an offense that we can project to pass way more than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When you look at Michael Gallup's raw numbers last year, he had the second most routes run in the entire NFL. Among all wide receivers, he ran the second most routes, which could be a bad thing, could be a good thing, because if you run that many routes and you don't put up statistics, you might just not be fucking good. But I think we know that Michael Gallup's pretty good as an NFL wide receiver at this point. I think more, uh, more telling is the catchable target rate and the target quality rating he received last year both outside the top 100. I don't know what he's supposed to do when Ben DiNucci is the motherfucker throwing him the ball. Now we have Dak back under center. Again, this offense should be a well-oiled machine. I talked about it in yesterday's video on bounce back running backs with Zeke. Dallas averaged in Dak's five starts, 32.8 points per game. That was number one paced out in the NFL last year. Uh, Their pass attempts per game, they had the single highest pass attempt rate in the NFL last year. 
under Dak. The pace is blistering. So Gallup, like Mike Williams, doesn't even need to see a huge target share. 16.5% target share would give him like 110 to 120 targets on the year in this offense, if we're being honest here, okay? Gallup, too, as a player, is just straight up disrespected as a receiver. When we look at his reception perception numbers, I mean, his success rate versus man and press, which you want to see out of a number one wide receiver, is really, really high. Like, he does great against man. He does great against press. And, like, Matt Harmon couldn't be higher on the guy in terms of, like, what he does for his offense. He takes the number one cornerbacks. He consistently plays against the top cornerbacks on the other team as the X receiver. So he takes a lot of weight off CeeDee Lamb, takes a lot of weight off Amari Cooper, but Michael Gallup is still a very, very good receiver, wins down the field, and in an offense is going to pass the ball a shit ton. Again, he doesn't need to see more than 16 to 17% of the targets in order to see 110, 115 targets. And with Dak delivering the ball, those are probably going to be accurate targets. So we love Michael Gallup. We love Michael Gallup in the ninth-ish round. If you want to stack him with Dak Prescott, it's a beautiful, beautiful value play there, just like how I kind of like Tom Brady with Antonio Brown. Speaking of Antonio Brown, he is also on this list. Antonio Brown only played in like half the games last year, but in the half games that he played in for Tampa Bay last year, his target share was basically on par with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. This is basically an arbitrage play. I don't expect him to actually outproduce Mike Evans or Chris Godwin just flat out in fantasy points, but I do expect him to be a PPR stud. They manufactured a shit ton of touches for him last year. He led the NFL in terms of his uh, screen targets per game. 2.4 screen targets per game, which tells you that they were forcing the ball to him. They want him to be a piece of this offense. We've seen what Brady did with him in the one game they had in New England together. Now we've seen a half a season in which Antonio Brown came off his couch to share a target share with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, which was basically parallel to each other. Fresh summer, fresh start, re-signed to the team. This team is going to be a well-oiled machine as well, just like Dallas. They're going to score a shit ton of points, and Antonio Brown should be A really, really, really solid, solid pick going outside of the top 100. So Antonio Brown's another bounce bike. So is Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos. At the end of the day, this guy is just simply too fucking talented not to believe he's going to ball. I know he's coming off the ACL tear. And maybe if you're one of those guys like me who's a little bit more pessimistic on injuries, you want to wait till year two removed from the ACL tear. But I just can't stop thinking about how good he was in 2019, 2019. I'm so enamored by the numbers he put up in 2019. 125 targets, 72 catches, 1112 receiving yards and six touchdowns. And I know people are going to be like, but did you see what he did with fucking Drew Locke? Did you did you fucking see what he did to your mother back in fucking 1945? No, I bet you fucking didn't, all right? But he did, and he's really good, and we're not going to act like Joe... We're not going to sit here, and we're going to act like Joe Flacco and Brandon Allen is what unlocks Cortland Sutton. We're not going to do that. We're, we're better than that, people, all right? Drew Locke might be bad, but he's not worse than Brandon Allen. He's not worse than Joe Flacco. And listen, if Teddy Bridgewater wins a job, at one point or another, Bridgewater's going to be on the field this year. And as much shit as we give him, like he churned out three top 25 fantasy wide receivers on the Panthers last year. Spaghetti, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. They all had a lot of fucking targets. They all had 120, 140. Curtis Samuel had about 100 targets. Cortland Sutton is not Curtis Samuel. Cortland Sutton is the number one, maybe the 1A, 1B-ish to Jerry Judy. But he's going to get a lot of fucking targets. I don't care where it's coming from. Cortland Sutton's just too talented not to succeed coming off this ACL tear. Cortland Sutton's bounced back this year. The last guy I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to say this real fucking quick, and then we're going to get to the outro. The last... The last guy who I've been taking a lot of, a lot of 17th round, 18th round best ball spots of AJ Green, Arizona Cardinals. All right. That's going to do it for the video today. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you do two things for me. Subscribe to the channel. We're very close to 50,000. We might already be there. But subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We're doing fantasy videos like this every single day. You can catch us on the podcast as well. The podcast is linked down below if you're more of uh, an audio learner like myself. And make sure you hit the button that looks like this. It's what we call a thumbs up button. It lets YouTube know that you enjoyed the video. And we'll continue to pump them out because we know you enjoy them. All right? I love y'all, and I will see you tomorrow. We're doing a live stream for Fade the Public. I don't know what the actual subject of the video is, even though those videos tend never to actually have a subject to them. We just kind of fucking bullshit the whole time, but they're kind of fun every once in a while. So join us for our live stream tomorrow. If you hit the little bell underneath the video, it turns notifications on, so it lets you know when we go live. We'll do a a Q&A portion of the video as well, so if you've got any questions for us for this summer, for this season, we will answer them in tomorrow's video. I love you, and I'm out.